Travel, beauty, fashion, entertainment, arts, fitness, celebrity interviews, and inspiring, engaging conversations with some of the best new and old music around. All this and more when you tune into On The Go with Tiffany Patton Podcast. Now, here's your host, Tiffany Patton. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You are listening to On The Go with Tiffany Patton, your link to love, life, and liberty. And we have a phenomenal show for you today. We have one of my personal favorites on the show. I listen to her in the car on podcasts. I watch her on YouTube. Um, She has a wealth of knowledge and she'll have, I know, several nuggets to drop with us tonight. And it is no other than my very special guest, Dr. Cindy Trum. And I will officially introduce her in just a few moments. But what I love to do is start off with the word of the day. And today's word of the day is don't allow distractions to deter you. So many times distractions come in our life to the enemy sets us up because he knows that he can't, he can't physically stop us. But if he can get us ourselves to stop what God has in store for us, then he w- it will get done. So what he does is he'll send distractions of frustration. He'll send distractions of um, untimely or not ordained relationships. He'll send distractions of um, sometimes even uh, illnesses because sickness doesn't come from God. God wants us to be healed and whole and set free. But sometimes God may allow a thing to work some things out of us or work some things in us. So all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So the distraction can be turned to our for our good. God always allows that. But it's us who has have to be very mindful of the distractions that will come and try to steal us from the God-given destiny that God has created us all for. So be careful on today, on this week, this month, this weekend of this, the distractions that may come and things that irritate you or may scare you or hinder you, or sometimes even get you very excited. Because like I said, some, some relationships aren't ordained by God, but it, he'll set it up in such a way that it will feel or seem as if it is. So be careful of distractions. Keep your eyes on him. Always be prayerful. And if you allow God to guide you, he will guide you and lead you into the pathway that he has in store for you, which is much, much grander than one that you could have ever imagined for yourself. So that is the word for the day. And I stated that I have an amazing, amazing guest. And she She should not need any introduction. She is a best-selling author, a life strategist with years of expertise and thought and industry-leading education. She's a psychotherapist, corporate advisor, consultant. Um, She was even groomed um, uh, in Bermuda, where she was raised as a senator, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And now she adds on the names and titles of wife and even mother. So which we are so elated to see and hear. And I like to introduce to you um, and, and present to you, present to some and introduce to others, the amazing, the didactable and very, I love to hear her speak. Dr. Cindy Trill. Hey there. Good afternoon. I, I'm so excited about your word for today. Personally, thank you for having me. No, you're more. But than- that word is so important about distractions because, you know, attention is in the new normal is the new currency. Yes. So whoever holds your attention determines your destiny sure. and determines what you spend your money on. So, uh, you know, distractions become the enemy of destiny, prosperity, and success. So, you know, if I was the devil, uh, the first thing I'd do is distract you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 
Yes. And if I can hold your attention, I can control your destiny. I, I, I think that vision is important though, because you know, if you have broken focus, the way to fix that is to have a vision for your life, because that will dictate where you spend your time, your energy, um, and your resources. And those are the three things, your energy, your focus, your resources, how you spend your resources, basically determine where you end up tomorrow at the end of the week, the end of the month, or the end of the year. And if you don't like where you are, then all you have to do is alter those three things because it's those three things that brought you where you are today, exactly where you are today. Energy, focus, and resources. Yeah. How, how you spend your resources, your the resource of time, relationships. And I think a lot of us don't think about relationships at all um, mm -hmm. as being one of the key contributors to our destiny. Yes. It is. Um, yes. When the... Wrong people leave your life. It makes room for the right people to come yes. into your life. Yes, ma'am. Um, and then sometimes you don't wait for someone to say goodbye. You give yourself right. a going away party. Yes, ma'am. You bring your balloons and your cake. And, you know, people will say, oh, you didn't have to do it. I didn't. I did it for myself. Yes. Bye. Yeah. You know? Yes, ma'am. So when, when you've outgrown a realm or a relationship, um, it, it's really up to you to pronounce the benediction on that, that season of your life to say goodbye. And, you know, in this season, you, you gotta see the future and the past yes. as opposing opposite ends of the continual. Mm -hmm. So view the past as your foe and the present as your friend, mm -hmm. and then ask yourself every single day. Who do you want to spend the most time with? Yeah. Obviously your friend. Yeah. So you, you have to say goodbye, goodbye to the past. Yes, ma'am. Didn't I tell you nuggets are ready. And it's the, what the first three minutes, three seconds of, of, of our interview nuggets. You started it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I, I could literally Dr. Trum, honestly, I can listen to you. Um, my daughter has moved uh, out of state and I drive pretty often, more often than I thought I would to go and visit her. And I listen to your podcast and I listen to you and I get so full. One time, um, my of course, my dad was with me because I, I take care of my dad now. And uh, he just looked at me and I pulled over and I literally had to, like I was worshiping and praising because I, I, I just went in because it was such a rich on-time word. And it, that's when I knew it was a rhema word because it wasn't something that you necessarily did recently, but it spoke to me in the now. And I yeah. I, I, I definitely have um, a fondness for you and your ministry and the things that you've had to go through to even give you the wisdom. Um, and then the... People don't understand it's the discipline that you've had to have to be able to um, sit at the master's feet and lend him your ear to be able to hear because everybody is unwilling to do the work. And I do understand that that, that does take discipline. And mm -hmm. so I thank you so much for that. You're so welcome. Um, it, it's a pleasure. I think I stumbled into success mm -hmm. so the next generation doesn't have to. You can run with just uh, unfettered um, stride into your future. You know, I, I'm just praying that God will take the struggle out of our stride. And that's my prayer for the next generation. And I'm praying that, you know, I, I would bow down low enough and you'll be able to attain greatness by standing on my shoulders. Um, and that's my wish. That's what I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing. Um, empower the next, empowering the next generation of great leaders. The world needs it. Yes. Um, yes. And, you know, I would hate to think that I'm one in, in, in my generation who is fighting for the same things that the next generation is fighting for. I want to fight for you so that you can go ahead and fight for humanity. And you you need mentorship. I mean, you know, I look at all of the greats and they all had mentors yeah. that it wasn't, it wasn't based on giftedness or calling or anointing. 
it was based on mentorship. You even look at the Bible yes. with Moses. Uh, Moses was mentored by Pharaoh, and then Moses mentored Joshua. You see, Esther was mentored by Mordecai. Ruth mentored Naomi. Timothy was mentored by Paul. And so all the all the great biblical characters, even when you look at people like Oprah Winfrey, she was mentored by Mrs. Duncan, later on by Maya Angelou. And I can go on and on and on to talk about actors and um, singers and performers and entertainers. The, I think the missing link for gen, the millennials, Generation Z, um, even X and A, I think, and and um, I think the missing link is going to be mentorship. Yeah. And I believe that in this in this generation, um, more of my generation, uh, we'll turn back. I'm not, I'm not saying that they should. Mm-hmm. I believe that they will. Because that was one of the things many of us didn't have. I think, yes, you know, mentorship really is a relationship that is um, entered in, into you uh, by the protege acknowledging you're my mentor mm-hmm. and the mentor saying you're my protege. Yes, and it's a relationship. It's a covenant relationship. Mm-hmm. It's different from coaching. Coaching is skills oriented and it's you know, you have a start date and a completion date, but mentorship is a lifetime, a lifetime. It's about personal development. It's about self-development. It's about holding you accountable to become the best version of yourself at the stage and age that you're in. It's about um, you as a protege, uh, discovering your purpose and what you have the potential to do and then the mentor holding you accountable for doing that, for for being moral and ethical in your approach to life. And, you know, at 17, I knew that I was a world leader. I just knew it. Um, and I'm, I, I look back and I said, okay, what was missing in my life? Mm-hmm. Because at 30, I was running my country. So I felt if I had this missing link, mm-hmm. I could have been ruling the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And and yeah. so, you know, really being objective and rational, looking back at, at each stage of my life, mm-hmm. I asked myself what was missing. The only thing that was missing was it was not the vision, not the personal knowledge of who I was, mm-hmm. um, not the opportunities. All of those were there. What was missing was the mentor. Uh, yeah. <sighs> so that's what I want to, I, I, I am. And I'm putting myself out there for all the, you know, I love women, all the women that are in leadership, that are entrepreneurs, yes. that are saying, you know, I know I want to do something great. Yes, I talk to you. I put yes. myself out there. I'm, 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 I'm gonna put a pin in that, and I'm gonna come back because uh, I have a question there. But I, I would be remiss if I did not speak about um, a, a very timely book. All of your books are timely. All of your books are just right on time. But see, that goes back to um, being one with God and knowing when to move. But the book Unstoppable uh, (laughs) was already predicted to be the bestseller. And it introduces her self-mastery series. And you talk about the core four system and this book. And Dr. Chum takes readers through a mastering of mindsets, behaviors, personal brands and leadership skills to become the very best versions of themselves to be able to evolve in a very complex world, which if, I mean, you could only be on under a rock if you did not understand that that is the time and day that we're living in right now. Um, I have a question though. What, what, What intrigued me was living and leading from your genius zone. Can you give us what what is the genius zone? Yeah, all of us have a genius. I, I think of a genius as something that is God given, something that we can fully express who we are through that. And it's a mindset that you take. I look at Venus and Serena, um, um, any like uh, actor or actress that is really good at what they do, Venus and Serena. Um, uh, Gandhi, for instance, uh, so Winston Churchill, I, I'm trying to think in my mind a variety of people. Um, and 
um, you know, someone like a Whitney Houston, a Michael Jackson, yeah. um, just just individuals that were more than gifted. They took their gift and they operated at the highest level yes. of their potential. Awesome. Uh, that's your genius zone. That's your sweet spot. That is, um, you know, you could be good at a whole bunch of things, but what is that one thing that you could be great at? And this is what self-mastery is all about. Self-mastery is carving out a personal path to the next best version of yourself, one that leads to the greatest expression of yourself, where you perform at the highest level of your potential. And in the process, um, beginning with self-knowledge and ending with self-actualization, you actually influence change within the, your industry and within humanity. And um, that's the best way I can say you're the genius zone. You're actually, actually mastering yourself so that the orientation towards yourself and towards the world makes this world a better place to live in. I love it. I love it. The genius zone. Well, I'm actively working to work my genius zone because that, as you stated, would be the sweet spot. And I think everybody all through life goes through life trying to reach that destination, I do believe. Um, yeah. May not master it in the way. And I would say that it was probably because they did it in their thought pattern instead of maybe asking God the direction. Sometimes we, we go on our own leading in our own direction. And sometimes some of us, like our, myself, you know, we get tired of, you know, hitting our head on a brick wall. So we stop and we say, okay, you know what? I try to wait my, my way, God. Can, can you help me with this? And then others that don't, they become frustrated with life because, and it could have been just one step away from it but they just didn't take that extra push, maybe extra sacrifice. Um, and sometimes humbling themselves to ask God for help, because I think a lot of times people see God as people. And, and I understand that disappointment happens, but God is never like people, thank goodness. And he loves us no matter what unconditionally. So he's always ready for a, our reconciliation with him. So um, with Unstoppable, I love it because it reminds me of one of the favorite songs by Cor Corinne Hawthorne, Unstoppable. Um, when you named this book, it, it happened to be right after, during, almost in the middle of us coming out of a pandemic, something that I never, for whatever reason in my mind, thought could happen. Um, but it was a time, and we're still kind of in it, where people are still... Um, they found themselves. A lot of people have realized some things about themselves, about where they are and their work, where they were in their family and their relationships. Um, what is the best in writing this book? What is the one thing that came out that was kind of like that aha for you? Like, wow, that's good. That's going to help. That's going to be the thing that helps and resonates with most. Because I know the message is always for the messenger first. So what was it that maybe hit you first and was like, ah, you know what? That's good. Yeah. That, I, I think that's a, that's a really great question to ask because, you know, it's going to make me dig deep. But I tell a story in the first chapter mm -hmm. about this race that I was in. I was five years old in elementary school and they put me in this race. Now, I'm not athletic. I, I grew up as a ballerina, but that's as far, that's the extent yeah, of my, yeah of my athletic ability. <laughs> I can't run, I can't hit a ball, I can't do anything, but I could turn on uh, point shoes. Right, right. <laughs> but they, just five years old, I grew up, you know, number six of seven kids. Yes. So I couldn't tie my shoelace. I guess it was easier to just tie my shoelaces than teach me. So anybody tied my shoelace in the family. They put me in the shoelace race. It was a kiddie race, right? <laughs> and then it was, you know, the next grade, grade two, grade three, grade four after that, you know, um, their races. So everything hung on this race starting to finish. So they put me in a shoe race and I had my clothes crease. You know, I was this poor little girl, but I looked like everybody else. My hair was in a ponytail and they said, okay, on your mark, 
get set, go. So you have to put your sneakers at the um, starting, go to the finish, run to the start, tie your shoelace and go back to the finish. Okay. So I'm running like every other kid, you know, five-year-old kid and everybody put on their shoes and I put on my shoes. Then one by one, they left because they had tied their, sho their shoes. I was the last one there. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I didn't know how to tie my shoes. So my teacher came and said, Cindy, you know, let me help you. I said, no, teach me. Because I right. knew that if I don't know how to tie my shoes, I could not compete in any races. And that's what it's like for many people. They see everybody running off, getting success, getting prosperity, but there's something missing. They're doing everything they could possibly do, but no one teaches them the trade secrets. Yes, ma'am. So my, I made my teacher teach me to tie. She taught, tied one and showed me how to tie the other. I untied it. And I can hear my mother saying, go, Cindy. The kids saying, go, Cindy. Everybody <laughs> saying, go, Cindy. And I refused to move wow. because I wanted to, I wanted to run legitimately. So I tied my shoelace. The race is not to the swift, but to the strong. The he that endures to the end. Yes. And I learned that day, once I tied, I ran across the finish line. They all cheered. They gave me a prize. I guess it was consolation prize or something. <laughs> it wasn't first, second, or third. Right. But I, I learned that day that I was not competing with anyone. I was competing with the next okay. best version of myself and I can win. And in the first chapter, I began to talk to you about how you are unstoppable. You are born to win. You have a winning streak already. The day that you were conceived, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, over a, a million seeds were released um, of other possible yous. Huh. And they were all swimming up to your mother's um, egg. Yes. And out of all of those millions of sperm, yes. other possible use, yes. you won. And you are here today. And if you could do that without, without arms and legs and feet and eye, teeth and lungs and a nose. And if you can win against all those other mi millions of possible other use, mm -hmm. imagine what you could do today with a brain, with an eye, with a nose, with a mouth, with an ear. And that was my greatest lesson in life. I I am not competing with anyone else. Yes. I'm competing with the next best version of myself. And I'm going to win. And that's why I wrote this book, Unstoppable. Yes. Unstoppable. And you are not wired for failure. You're wired for success. Unstoppable. And, you know, <laughs> my, my last statement, if everyone could accept this one statement, mm -hmm. that, that your past doesn't define you, you are better than your the worst thing you've ever done, and greater than the biggest mistake you've ever made. If you can accept that, you're greater than that, you're bigger than that, then you will be unstoppable. That is Dr. Cindy Trump. This is why you get the book, Unstoppable. It is in um, all of- Amazon, Amazon.com. Amazon.com. You want to make sure I put in my order and I was mad because I normally get things in Amazon like next day. And it told me it's actually coming later today. It's at between five and 10. <laughs> so I'm still waiting for my copy, but I will have. Well, you know, it's print on demand. So yeah. Um, yeah. it's print on demand. Okay. So, so, yeah. So when you order, they print okay. it and they ship it out to you. So okay. we don't do the shipping. It's shipped from the publishing company. Okay. And um, so it'll take a little longer time, but it's worth every, it's worth the investment. And, you know, I want to encourage everyone, it's a new book, but we also have the program to go with it, the Unstoppable okay. Program, so they can go on unstoppablemasterclass.com okay. and do the program. So it's forwarded by my friend, Les Brown. Les Brown, yes, Mr. Les Brown. And you, what you just said was wonderful. I don't want to keep you long, but you answered the, my question that I had is, please tell us the power of consistency. And that was, a, that was almost a twofold answer for the next question, because I hear you talk about it so much in your podcast and your writings. And there is, and my pastor says it often about being consistent and why that is so um, necessary when it comes to your purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's the one, it's the 10,000 hour theory. Yeah. You know, um, whatever you do for 10,000 hours, 
then you succeed in that thing. So I can remember starting out in business, you know, after I left government, I had to hit a hard reset because I immigrated to the United States of America about 30 years ago. So I had to start all over. Um, I wish I knew now what I teach my protégés because I was already on the top of my game. I didn't have to start all over. over. I just had to do, I just had to reinvent myself Mm -hmm. and then recraft my personal brand. That's all I had to do. Okay. You know, but anyway, hey, you learn. I I stumbled into success so that you don't have to. But anyway, um, you know, coming to the United States of America, I didn't come for a better life. I had a better life. I came by assignment. You know, this was an assignment that God gave me. Yes. So I came to the United States of America, hit a hard reset. So I'm a black female immigrant. Mm-hmm. So uh, that, okay. that, that would count. <laughs> yeah. Everything, everything, I, I look around and I'm so blessed, but everything was created by vision. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, a, a lot of people don't understand, you know, this book, Unstoppable, it's about self-mastery. And what is important about self-mastery is, is a very simple statement that, that I'm about to make. Okay. And I want everyone to hold this as true. You cannot succeed past your concept of self or the level of your self-worth. You can't, you cannot succeed past that. So, so how you think about yourself is where you place yourself. Mm. So some of us talk about our relationships, but you place yourself there. That's right. So your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. And you have to, you know, take some time for self-mastery. Self-mastery starts right with self-awareness. And self-awareness is knowing where I end and you begin. Because mm-hmm. a lot of us are somebody that we should not be because yes. we're enmeshed in people's opinion of ourselves. Yes, we are. Enmeshed in other people's lives. And, you know, you've got to know where you end and someone else begins. And then... Yes. The next one is self-knowledge. Do you really know who you are? Mm -hmm. And then the next is self-approval. Do you approve of your greatness? Do you approve of your success? Do you approve of your prosperity? A lot of people don't. They say, this is what I want, but they don't approve of it. And then, you know, self-love, that's the big thing now. Self-love, self-care. Mm-hmm. You notice everything is self, self, self. self yeah. How can you care for self that you don't know? Huh. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I have been coined self love strategist, but it came out of a lot of, and what you stated just now, which was true. It came out of me being in a relationship I should not have been in. I placed myself in that. However, I would not have placed myself in that relationship had I not addressed some of the things growing up that I should have. So a lot of times. We run from ourselves and run from the things that the very things that we need to look at, because if we can address it, then we can shine light on it. I, for me, I needed to give it over to God and let him do some things and allow the ugly phase. Um, and and once you go through the ugly phase and you can get to the other side of it, but without stopping and allowing that, when I finally said, you know what, I want the very best version of myself. And that means that I have to go through this. And I just allowed it. I just allowed it. And I did. But let me, let me drop this one nugget one more time to repeat it. Yeah. yeah. I want everyone to write this down. Please. I cannot outperform my current concept of self nor succeed beyond the level of my self-worth. Mm, that's it. That's it. This is the science of self-mastery. So, you know... If you feel a lot of times, these are all subconscious. Mm -hmm. So if the level of your self-worth is to be, I don't know, to earn $5, $5 a year, Mm -hmm. even if you earned a hundred thousand dollars, guess what? That hundred thousand dollars is going to slip through your hands so that all you have left is that $5. So this is the science of self-mastery. To thy own self be true. We try to control things outside of ourselves, 
but you have to control things inside of you. Where does tomorrow come from? Where does your future come from? Where does your future come from? Where it comes from today? within you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It comes from within you. So if you want to change your future, stop trying to change things and people outside of you. Change yourself. And things and people outside of you will change to accommodate the Ooh. change that you make. You go first. <laughs> So yes, this is in yeah. this is in marriage. This is in relationships. This is in friendship. This is the workplace. You th you see, I think there's this. My husband talks about uh, relationship revolution, right? Mm -hmm. yes, and right. my my definition of a revolution is the exercise of sovereignty over a realm. Mm. So the revolution is not between someone; it's inside of myself. That's where the revolution, me exercising sovereign control over me. Yeah. So I'm the CEO of me. Dot org, dot com. <laughs> yes, man. <Dot> e. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's the, and that's it. You know, people will disappoint you. Yeah. Um, people will reject you. And again, rejection is a gift. Mm -hmm. Poverty is a gift. The greatest two gifts God gave, ever gave me is the gift of poverty and the gift of rejection. I'm in great company. I, I tell you why. The, the, I, I, the, the gift of poverty, I started my first business at eight. So I've been fun, financially responsible, responsible for myself since I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. And the gift of rejection was just that knock on the hand to say, hey, you have outgrown this relationship and outgrown this realm. Yeah. So go ahead and give yourself a going away party. Yeah. You don't wait for someone to to reject you. Give yourself a going away party, and it takes it takes personal integrity. And this is why this book, Unstoppable, mm -hmm. is important for people because it really pushes you to a place of personal integrity. See, credibility is you not lying to the world. Yeah, integrity is you not lying to yourself. Ah, I love it. So when you it. when you operate. In your genius zone, yes, you were just simply saying, "I refuse to lie about my genius. I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. I'm not good at this, but I am good at something." And you want me to lie about being good at it, but that's called, <laughs> that's called false humility. Mm -hmm. I refuse to uh, dumb down to blend in to fit in. Because yes, I'm good at something, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So I don't have problems with other people lying about who they are. <laughs> I have problems when you want me to lie about like, who I am. Yes. Now that's what I have problems with. <laughs> so I, I'm not. I, I'm not good at you know basketball. I'm not good at gymnastics. God knows I'm not good at singing. <laughs> but what I'm good at is communicating. I can write, and I can speak. That's what I'm good at. Yes. So I cannot give God glory mm. if I refuse to let my light show shine. Shine. Listen to what the scripture says. Let your light show so shine before man that man may see your good works and glorify it, your father which is in heaven. So that means that if they can't see it, God can't be glorified. So you have to let your light shine. Say, Operate on in your genius zone. Go ahead. <laughs> That's Listen, true. you know why you have a horn? People say you shouldn't toot your own horn. Who's <laughs> going to toot it for me? Right. So I tell people, toot your own horn, beat your own drum. Right. Because <laughs> nobody's going to do it for, for you. Why? Because they have their own to toot. Exactly. And beat. Exactly. So you know, girl, get your, get your horn in your hand <laughs> and start blowing. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You don't even know. I have a candle company called Interlight Candle, and God gave me that very scripture. So let your light shine for it, for that very reason. And the funny part about the the two of your own horn, I always thought about that that one saying where they say you can't have your cake and eat it too. And then one day I just stopped. I was like, but wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. It's my cake. Why can't I have it and eat it? Because it's guess like what? Guess what? You can't eat the cake if you don't have the cake. <laughs> So I'm going to have my own cake. Yes. yes and eat it too. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Because it's mine. Yes. 
I one more question in regarding relationships. You just were the most beautiful bride, the most beautiful bride, and you talked on um, several different, having different interviews. I know you were with Tamron and talked about um, being married and relationships 50 plus, because you actually got married at 60. Now I know you guys are looking and trying to wipe your screens and try to figure out like, wait, what? She looks no, I know she looks nowhere near. I I get that, I do, because nowhere near do you. But can you speak to those? um, Because I'm getting closer to that 50 club and but I'm, I'm very focused now I'm no longer I used to be the girl who oh, I just want to I gotta get married gotta get married. and I think I'm I, at the time it's because I think I needed it to complete me I did not I don't need that it it's an enhancement not a completion um and I know that and so speak to those women who feel like you know I've gotten to this age and it's just over. I'm just going to hang it up or I'm just going to give it up. Or the ones that feel like I'm nothing if I don't have this, this, and this. There's so many. I think we have, and it starts when we're young, playing with Barbie dolls and things. They, we, I think we have certain expectations that are placed on us without us knowing. Speak to the women um, or even the men who may feel as if they may have missed their turn or missed their mark or it's too late. Yeah. And going off of a time. Flags. <laughs> it's so complex because there's so many um, sort of sociological layers to this, a, a lot of cultural layers uh, to it. Um, so let me just go on the negative side and then bring it to the positive. So a lot of a lot of the potential men, either in prison or they died prematurely, drug overdose, being shot, you know, there's th- there's that issue. There's that issue. Um, and then let me bring it right over to the positive side and hopefully speak in sound bites. Um, you know, at, at some point, um, you have to be able to say, I am enough. Yes. Yeah. There's, we're born for community. So you, you don't get rid of it. There was never a day that I said, okay, I'm, I'm just going to give it up. I never gave it up. I put it on my vision and my vision board. So I do visions in 20 year, 20 year increments. So in the first 20 years, everything that I wrote on that vision board and my vision came to pass, except that one was marriage Mm -hmm. and I carried it over, Okay, you know, to my next vision. So I, I'm on my second 20 year vision plan. And there were 12, um, components to write. I, I call them micro visions that make up your life plan. And you can find that in chapter number eight in the book, Hello Tomorrow. I love that. And it's all there, chapter number eight, given to you and shows you how to write your life plan okay. as a vision. So the, you have these 12 micro visions mm-hmm. and one of them is marriage. So you've got another 11 to focus on. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we focus on maybe three micro visions that make up our life plan at the expense of the other eight or nine or 10 or seven or what, whatever we're not focusing on. So what I did was um, I isolated the marriage and I kept praying for it. And then I gained fullness by pursuing my bucket list in the other 11 areas. So that's, in, that's important. Yeah. So all, all is not lost. You know, I know, you know, a lot of women are giving up and they feel depressed, mm-hmm. but you're giving up on your entire life, right? You got another 11 out of 12 areas that you could f- f- find fulfillment in. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a lot to do. Um, so I started a nonprofit organization, Trim Global Charities. Um, so while people were adopting children and dogs and cats, mm-hmm. I was adopting cities. Is it, it's, it's so much to get involved in. Yes. To be fulfilled with. Yes. You know, that at the, at the end of the day, I think we miss the better part of our lives and then just don't put a, a hard time frame Cause I, I initially said, oh, I want to be married at 30 and then start my family at 32. You know, I was a career person, start my family at 32 and at these four dates. So when 32, 31, 32, 33, it's not like I didn't have suitors. 
and these amazing men mm -hmm. that could have been potentially my husband. Mm -hmm. But, and they were amazing human beings, right? Mm -hmm. But they just didn't have that thing I was looking for. Yes. So I think the thing that I was looking for was someone that had capacity for everything that I was. As yes. A, yes. Because there's a lot of men that have capacity for you as a wife and a mother. Yes. But nothing else. That's right. But I, you know, I'm a world leader. So you've got to have com capacity for, yes, a wife, you know, yes, yes a lover, mm -hmm. but I'm a world leader. Mm -hmm. So you have to have capacity for that. And I was looking for someone that could affirm that in me and um, acknowledge it more, more than affirming it, acknowledging it and embracing that. Yeah. And that so means, know, know what you're looking for, you know. Um, in, in, in the, your, your husband, your spouse, and then you have to be very clear it, during the dating stage, your non-negotiables. What do you expect in this person as your husband? And then what do you expect from him as a man? There's this is two different roles Yes, sir. as a male, I'm expecting this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And as my husband, I'm expecting this, this, and this. These are my non-negotiables. So if you cannot, then I cannot. Yes. Yes, if you cannot say yes to that, I will not say I do to you. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So, and then vice versa. What do you expect of me at, as a woman? Yes. And, and then as a wife. And let me come into agreement. Because you're not, what you're not going to do to me mm. is surprise me after I say I do. I do. Yes, ma'am. After yes. I say I do, it's too late because that's we right. Got it. Got it. <laughs> There's no addendum. <laughs> oh, I forgot. You didn't read really that. No, 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 no. No addendum here. This is what we agreed on. Right. And you know, there, there's, there's a woman for every man and a man for every woman. Mm -hmm. So there were, there were some women that love, you know, housekeeping and they don't mind cooking and cleaning right. and all of that. But when I got married, I already had a housekeeper. Right. So That's all of a sudden, please don't expect me. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Yes, yeah, here, here's, the <laughs> here's the bill. Here's the bill for the housekeeper. <laughs> you know, and I then, you, you know, I, 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 if I cook for one, I can cook for two. Yes. So I don't mind. And yes. then I'm, yes. I'm excessively clean. Yeah. Accessibly. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to have a clean house. You're mm -hmm. going to have a cooked meal. Mm -hmm. These are the things I enjoy. But yeah. there are some women that don't enjoy it. What, you know, true. true. What are you What are you going to do? What What are you going to do with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I look at my brother. My brother got married. He loves cleaning. He cooks, mm -hmm. and he picks up the kid. He doesn't mind right. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, he picks up the kid. He cooks. Mm -hmm. You know, he cleans. Yeah. So you know, it depends. There's yeah. There's a woman for every man, a man for every, for every woman. Very yeah, true. very true. I hope that helped. Yes, it did. And and for those who are watching and listening, I pray that all of the wealth of information and just the realness. I I think that's why Dr. Trim, you are so well loved. And even when you're giving information that most when most others give it, they can't. It's not digested very well. It can be digested by you because you're just so authentic. And that is quite refreshing, I think, because so many people, especially in the age of social media, um, have all the different masks and faces and, and, and of people of who they are. But your authenticity um, allows us to even be able to swallow even the untolerable normally situations and, and things that you would have to say to us to get us where we need to be. So I thank you so much for all of your wisdom and your candidness and congratulations on the nuptials. And it, it just looks wonderful on you. And I thank you for giving us the hard things of negotiables of what we need. And because really what you gave us, we can apply across the board and business um, and friendships. Uh, we, you just have to know your boundaries and what you will and won't accept. And stand yeah. to that. So if, if anybody's writing roles, rules, responsibilities, expectations, and boundaries. Rules, rules. So that's what you need in any kind of relationship. Okay. 
Yeah, that that's, you know, what are the rules of engagement? What is this role that I'm going to play? What are the boundaries? What are the expectations? All of that has to be hammered out. And I think that each, there are 12 bands of relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you got to put people in their place. Which band do they belong in? The furthest it's from you is strange. <laughs> the closest to you is is you. That's your sacred self, right? You said the farthest from you is? Is is a stranger. Stranger, gotcha. The closest to you is your sacred self. Yes. And there's only space for you and God there. Nobody That's else. True. Yeah. So, you know, most of us live in the outer band, band number 12, as mm -hmm. a stranger to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then wow. you let strangers into your sacred place and they dash mm -hmm. that space. Oh, wow. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's very true. Yeah. Very true. true. So these are the things, you know, um, I mentor some of the best and brightest from around the world. Yes. That's my mentorship program, you know. And again, The Unstoppable is the book get, that we, we, we talk about get everything the book. else. Yes. Get the, book. get the book. Unstoppable. Get the book. Get the book. Yeah, you will be the book. Helpful. I'm telling you, it it will yeah. help you. The, the book's a purpose is for you to help help those of you who feel stuck. And then we all at certain points in our life get stuck, or we get kind of you know there's a snag there, and we're like almost there, but we just can't quite make it over. If you want to know the keys and the principles to be able to get over um that hump to get get yourself unstuck to kind of move the snag, pull it off and just rip off the Band-Aid and go over. Unstoppable is the book on Amazon. You have to make sure the order is print to order. You will not, you will not regret this. This, if, one thing that you have to learn how to do is to invest in yourself. And this is one of the best investments, I promise you, that you will make by purchasing Unstoppable because there's nothing like wisdom. No one can go in your head and cut it out. So get the keys. Put it inside of you, take it and then run and become the unstoppable person that God has designed you to do. Because Dr. Cindy Trim has already done the heavy lifting. All you have to do is now just turn the page. Unstoppable on Amazon. Get it today. You will not be, uh, you, you won't be disappointed. And if you love everything that you've heard here, she has a mentorship program. Um, she's been my mentor already in my mind, like when I listen to a <laughs> podcast and I'm driving, but definitely, definitely. And I, I've got to look at her mentorship because I just adore the authenticness of who she is and what she carries. And a lot of people, you need people to pour into you to help pull out of you what's already inside of you. And she has that and she's put it in the form of courses and a mentorship program. So definitely do that because I'm telling you, you'll never be the same. And for those who may say, okay, well, I may not be able to do that right now. She can still be a mentor. She has all types of amazing books from Command Your Morning to the Hello Tomorrow to Unstoppable. Like go and I mean, she has books out there that you can just start. Start the work now. Start the work today. I, it's been definitely one of the most highlights of my day, my week, my month, and my year. I thank you. It has been a complete honor and joy. I simply adore you um, with all respect in the word adore. And I thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to be on the go with us on today. Oh, the pleasure is absolutely mine. The pleasure is mine. Thanks Please. so much for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're dropping some nuggets there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, listen, I've learned most of these nuggets from definitely writing and listening to you and your podcast. I'm telling yeah. you. And she can pray you up under 12 million seats. I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> You definitely follow Dr. Trump everywhere where you can follow her on social media, um, Facebook, Instagram. Make sure that you go to her website. She at Dr. Trump Ministry, Ministries. Um, make sure that you follow her. So into her. One thing that I've learned, um, there's power in sewing. And I don't do this much. And you probably never hear me say this a lot. But I've been doing a lot of research. And there is power and sewing where you want to go. And she hosts so many different nuggets and, and a weight of, of knowledge of where I know lots of people who will listen to this want to go in the direction 
So it, I, it, I wouldn't care if it was just $5, whatever it is that you just feel the need. So where you want to go? I've just learned this myself. So this is why I'm saying, I mean, like I've heard it and I've done it, but I've really been learning it and, and doing that. And this is definitely a person um, that I will vouch because you can't sow into every soil, but she is great, good soil. And you will definitely reap a harvest, an amazing harvest. Um, and then just listen. One other thing, just listen. Listen to, to her podcast. She has podcasts. Um, you can go on YouTube, follow her. And just as you're driving or as you're cooking, just listen. And things will begin to take root and you'll see things grow and sprout out of you that you would have never imagined. And you'll see the life that you really want to live. Just take some of the nuggets. She's done the work. So please do so. I thank you all for watching and listening on the go with Tiffany Padden, your link to love, life, and liberty. And I thank you once again, Dr. Cindy Trim. You are welcome anytime. Anytime. We have to do it again. Yes. I feel like I'm speaking to the younger version of myself. Because <laughs> yeah, you, you have so much life. And I love that. So much life, so much hope. You bring so much joy. And you light up the whole room with your smile. Thank it's amazing. You. Anything we can do to support you, we are here. It, it, it'll be an honor. Thank it'll you. Be an honor. Thank you. And the honor has been all of mine. Please make sure, once again, get the book Unstoppable. It is on Amazon, and you it comes to order. It's print to order. So as soon as you go ahead and hit send and make that payment, it will get printed right for you. You've been listening to On The Go with Tiffany Patton, your link to love, life, and liberty. Remember that someone needs you just the way you are. Oh,